Hello, welcome to another video. Whenever you get a definite integral problem in which one of the boundaries is infinity, you should know automatically that that is an improper integral. Why? Because you can't plug in infinity into anything. You can only take limits at infinity because nobody gets to infinity. Okay, so when the problem says, oh, the, one of the limits is infinity or negative infinity, uh, yeah, you know you, it's an improper integral. You have to rewrite the problem. But that's not the only problem. Before you start, you want to ask yourself, let's even assume that they gave me numbers that I can deal with, like 1 and 2 that are not troublesome numbers, okay? Um, can I actually integrate the function itself? Do you know how to integrate this? So in this case, you have a quadratic in the denominator. And when you have a quadratic in the denominator, um, you want to say it's either I can factor the quadratic or I have to write the quadratic as a, uh, as a perfect square. You complete the square, okay? But at this point, we can see obviously that this is a very common quadratic where you can factor to x plus 2, x plus 3. So that second part of the problem is taken care of. So we have to go back again. So we know there's infinity on this side. That's improper. We want to check out 0 also. Is it possible for us to plug in 0 into this function without having any problem? Yes, because we plug in 0, this is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 6. So this is not undefined at 0. So we don't have two problems. We have just the problem of infinity. Because in some functions, the function will be undefined when you plug in the lower limit too. And so you have two um, problems. You have to write two separate um, integrals or even limits. So at this point, we know that the only major problem for this problem is infinity. So, like I said, um, we want to know if we can in integrate this. Well, we can integrate this because we can factor this and separate it into two um, different functions, which we can use um, um, integration by partial fractions. Okay, we have to do the partial fraction decomposition of this. So. Before we continue with this problem, I want to decompose this into simpler things that we can work with. So, if you remember your partial fraction decomposition, let's get into it. So, the first thing we're going to tell ourselves is this expression can be rewritten in the factored form to be x plus 2 and x plus 3. Okay, so now if we rewrite this, we have factors, linear factors, which makes life a lot easier because we can assume that actually there were two fractions that were written as a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 3. So we just want to know what a is and what b is and we'll be fine. And how do we do that? Well, um, if you've mastered your partial fraction decomposition, you just want to drop this down. The numerator will be equal to, if we cross multiply, because what we actually do is to multiply this side and this side by this denominator. Rem you, you notice that if you multiply this side by the denominator, um, it's going to cancel this side and what you have left is going to be 1. If you take these two and multiply each of these terms, what you're going to have here is this x plus 2 is going to cancel this out and you're going to have a into x plus 3. And if you go to the other side, this is going to be plus b into x plus 2. So this is what you have. Now, the quick method to deal with this is to just look for a very good number that will zero out one of these. So I'm going to start with x equals negative 2. If I put x equals negative 2 here, it's going to be negative 2 plus 2, that's 0, 0 times b, everything zeroes out. Put that same negative 2 here, this is going to be negative 2 plus 3, that's going to be 1. 1 times a is 1, so a is a rather, so a equals 1. So I've got, when x equals negative 2, um, I got a equals 1. So remember, these are constants, so it doesn't matter what number you substitute, the, the values of a and b will not change. So let's do the same thing. We're going to smartly choose when x is negative 3. When x equals negative 3, we're going to have b will be equal to, if we put negative 3 here, this zeroes out, 
But negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, so that's negative b equals 1, which means b equals negative 1. So now we can confidently say that this expression can be rewritten as 1 over x plus 2 plus um, negative 1 over x plus 3. That's what we're going to do. So we can say that the integral that we have here actually 1 over x plus um, 2, x plus 3 is the same thing as saying 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 3 because b is negative 1. Okay, so that's what we have. We can now go back here and rewrite this problem like this. This is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 3 everything dx. So that's a simplified form and it's easier for us to deal with now. So now because we cannot plug in infinity at any point after we take the integral we have to write this as a limit because it is improper. So how do you write improper integrals? This is what we're going to do. We're going to say that this is the limit as r goes to infinity of this integral 0 to r. You see we have not changed anything we're just saying we're going to be taking the limit as r goes to infinity. You can see r goes to infinity uh, and it's the same thing but we'll be writing this form this time. So it's going to be 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 3 dx. So the next thing, because these are very easy, we can take the, the integral of them, they are linear functions, so this is going to be the same thing as the limit as r goes to infinity. Uh, if we integrate this, it's going to be the natural log of x plus 2, so ln x plus 2, well, absolute value, let's use absolute value for that, okay? ln x plus 2, um, we'll put it this way, minus the natural log of x plus 3. But we're going to be evaluating from 0 to r, from 0 to r. See, that's cool. Now, let's evaluate from 0 to r. We're going to substitute r here. We're also going to substitute um, r here. And then we we'll substitute 0 and then substitute 0 here, and this is what we're going to have. This is going to be equal to the limit as r goes to infinity of the first portion. If we substitute r, we're going to have the natural log of r plus 2 divided by r plus 3. I just applied the laws of logarithms because remember when you, sep when you um, subtract 2 um, logarithm terms from each other is the same thing as taking um, the ratio of the arguments. So it's the ratio of the arguments. Remember that logarithm law that the log a minus log b is equal to log a over b. Remember this. Okay, so that's what I just applied here. Let's get rid of this. So this first part is taken care of. I still put the absolute value sign on it. And then I would say minus. So put this away here. Um, ln, when you plug in zero, this is gonna be a natural log of two minus natural log of three. So it's gonna be two over three. Okay, um, this is positive, so I don't need to put the natural, I mean, put the absolute value sign. There's no function there, it's a constant. So now what do we do? We have to take this limit. What do you think the limits will be as r goes to infinity? Well, at r's, r, as r goes to infinity, um, one more thing. We can divide the top and the bottom by r. Let's just divide every single term by r. So this is going to be equal to um, the limit as r goes to infinity of the natural log of r over r plus 2 over r divided by r over r plus 3 over r. Okay, let's still do the absolute value there. 
minus the natural log of 2 over 3. Okay, uh, close this up. I will need some space here since I've already done this part. I'll clean up from, you know what, I'm just going to put the answer down here because we're almost done. Okay, so let's say we go from here to this side. So at this stage, this is going to be 1 plus 2 over r. So it's going to be the limit as r goes to infinity of the natural log of, watch this, 1 plus 2 over r divided by 1 plus 3 over r. Okay, that's... um. In absolute value okay let's just put the absolute value symbol like that okay and um, plus the natural log of 2 over 3 okay uh, we're taking this limit so based on what we have here as r goes to infinity this goes to 0 this also goes to 0, so you're going to have 1 plus 0 over 1 plus 0, which is 1 over 1. So we're going to have the natural log, so this is equal to um, the limit. So, oh, this limit goes, so we're just going to have the natural log because this we've applied the limits now. The natural log of 1 over 1, which is the natural log of 1, plus the natural log of 2 over 3. Well, the natural log of 1 is 0. And the natural log of 2 over 3 is 2 over 3. So it's 0 plus natural log of 2 over 3, which is equal to the natural log of 2 thirds. That is our final answer. Leave a comment in the comment section. Give this video a like and share it with your friends. Remember, those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.